الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم today is my third day sitting before you i mean third time sitting before you in one day so for that i apologize we have to speak to brother tanweer not to have that shouldn't happen again you would get tired hearing one person today's reflection is surah at-tawbah our verse is verse number 17 uh, i'm sorry verse number 18 allah azza wa jalla says inna ma ya'muru masajid allah man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir wa aqama as-salah wa ata az-zakah wa lam yakhsha illa allah fa'asa ulaika an yakunu min al-muhtadin allah says verily those only those maintain the houses of allah those who have the following qualities those who believe in allah in the last day those who establish the prayers and those who fulfill their charity obligations and those who fear none but allah perhaps these are the only ones that can hope to attain or be among the guided ones asa ulaika yakunu min almuhtadin so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here describes the maintainers of the masajid so first of all we know the the virtue of the masajid these are the most blessed places on earth uh, allah's messenger said sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith from sahih muslim habbul biladi ila allah masajiduha the most beloved places on earth are the masajid So the masajid are so important they are the life blood of the muslim community that was the most important thing in the life of the early muslims in makka when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam started his ministry they began to meet in darul arqam so they set a location a meeting place initially it was secret but the community needed a center a nucleus a meeting place and that's what masajid are they are places dedicated to worshiping allah and remembering him so when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam moved to medina he established more than one masjid so before he arrived in medina he arrived in quba which is in the outskirts of medina and what did he do the first thing he did before anything else before even finding a place to stay he built a masjid in quba and that's the first official masjid built in the history of islam and then eventually he came to yathrib medina and the first thing we know again he built a masjid in surah al-isra allah says allah talks about the journey of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the only journey of the messenger of allah mentioned explicitly subhana alladhi asra bi 'abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawla li nuriyahu min ayatina allah says glory be to the one who transported his servant from masjid al haram to masjid al aqsa so the messenger he traveled from makkah to jerusalem to quds but allah doesn't say from makkah to jerusalem allah doesn't say from this city to that city allah uses the reference point from this masjid to that masjid because that's the life of the believer everywhere they go the most important place for them are the masajid they start with masajid they end with masajid everywhere we go so in this particular verse Allah talks about ya'mar those who imara imara means to maintain to protect the houses of Allah so this is a great virtue and here Allah is speaking about the prior verse prior to this is in surah at-tawbah Allah says ma kana lil mushrikeena an ya'muru masajid Allah shahidin ala anfusihim bil kufr so the background here is in early islam in makkah the mushrikeen they were in charge of masjid al haram the masjid built by ibrahim alayhi salam and they prided themselves in that they had two institutions siqaya uh, siqaya al hajj wa imara al masjid al haram they had the responsibility of giving water to the pilgrims and maintaining al masjid al haram and it was in particular families and they were proud of that but they were mushrikeen so they prided themselves in that this issue arose well who should be maintaining and protecting and and honoring and um 
taking care of the houses of Allah. So Allah says here, this is where the rules were laid down. Ma kana lil mushrikeen. It is not for the mushrikeen ever. This is a red line in Islam. It's not for the mushrikeen to maintain the houses of Allah. Shahideen ala anfusihim bil kufr. As long as they testify to kufr or they believe in their false beliefs. But then the next verse, which is our verse for today, innama ya'muru masajid Allah. But really, those people maintain the houses of Allah or should maintain the houses of Allah. Those who, man amana billah wal yawmil akhir, those who believe in Allah and the last day, wa aqama salah, wa ata zakah, those who establish the prayers, those who give the zakat, and they fear none but Allah, wa lam yakhsha illallah. So these are the qualities of those who truly deserve to run the masajid, to maintain the masajid, to build the masajid, everything that that entails. So what are these qualities? Number one is faith, believing in Allah in the last day. Number two, those who practice or establish their prayers. Someone's not involved in the salawat and doesn't have this basic practice, this basic pillar of Islam, doesn't deserve to be uh, involved in the masajid. And those who give their zakat dues. Um, so, and finally, those who have courage. It takes a great amount of courage to establish houses of Allah. In the beginning, uh, in early Islam, Abu Bakr Siddiq and many other companions did the same. He set a part of his house near the entrance to pray and recite Quran. This is before the Muslims were allowed to come to the Kaaba. So he would recite Quran there out loud and the mushrikeen would pass by and they would bother him. They would torture him. They would throw things at him. And that all, it was often the case with many of the Muslims. But he persisted. Why? Because he had this essential quality. وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ He feared none but Allah. This, this, this phrase also means, so it means courage. It also means those who have sincerity. They do it for Allah. You know, so the work of masajid building, work of the houses of Allah has to be done sincerely for the sake of Allah. It can't be for showing off. There's so many masajids being built around the world just for people to show off their name or rulers to show off their name. And they invest so much money to make it the highest minaret in the world or the most beautiful masjid or masjid. They outdo one another in, in these characteristics. And it's really for, you know, it's, it appears, I mean, we can't judge anyone, but like, this is not truly for the sake of Allah. When your name is plastered all over and it's done with publicity and, and this kind of style. So these are important characteristics to keep in mind. Um, and at the end, Allah says, فَعَسَىٰ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنْ يَكُونُوا مِنَ الْمُهْتَدِينَ For only such, these people are those who may hope to be, be among the rightly guided ones. We talked about Hidayah in the beginning. The Quran is about Huda. We talked about the characteristics of the people of guidance. But throughout the Quran, Allah gives us different aspects. So here, this group of people who run the masajid, who maintain the houses of Allah, at the end he says they are hoped to be among the muhtadin, those who are guided. So this is a great practical snapshot of what some people of guidance look like. So, you know, what is Imaratul Masjid? So this is talking about everything. So the scholars say there's two types of maintenance. The maintenance of the houses of Allah. There are the physical maintenance. And there's also the functional maintenance. You can say physical and functional. Physical maintenance is everything from building the foundations, building the building, the structure. Um, it involves cleaning. It involves you know, the plumbing involves taking care of the houses, everything it takes to keep a masjid running. So that's physical maintenance. And there are many examples of that. Ibrahim was commanded to raise the foundations of the house. Ibrahim and Ismail, they built the foundations of this house. So they were involved in the physical imara of Al Masjid al Haram. And then the functional maintenance are those who come to the prayers. They attend the prayers, they come to the salawat, they attend the activity, they're involved in, you know, providing services to the community. Um, everything it takes from the people in the parking lot who help park the cars, from the people downstairs who are directing, the people who clean, the people who organize iftar, people who organize different things, people who give lectures, people who take care of the audio system, the sound system. 
So these are all various aspects of maintaining the masajid. It's a great, and beautiful, and great act of worship that Allah honors. So in this verse, you know, it's a great verse. Those who maintain the houses of Allah should have these qualities. So it's hoped that those who are involved in this kind of work, they have these qualities. And that's why some of the Salaf, they used to say, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ الرَّجُلْ يَعْمُرُ الْمَسَاجِدِ فَحَسِّنُوهُ بِالظَّنِ When you see any person involved in maintaining a masjid or the houses of Allah, think good of him, have good expectations, think that he has these qualities. Um, so this is very, very important. Um, I'll end with uh, Uthman ibn Affan when he wanted to expand the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ in his time. So the Masjid al-Nabawi was very simple in the beginning. There were no minarets, there were no carpets. Obviously, carpets are modern invention. They used to pray in the sand. And when it rained, it became mud. And then there would be all mud all over there. They didn't have janmas. Janmas was not a sunnah. So if we, if you, or if we study how the companions of the Prophet prayed, we will be shocked. It is totally opposite of our prayers. They would pray on the dirt, on the ground. And there's a beautiful hadith, the best prayer that one of the companions remembered where you know, it was in night of Ramadan where you know, it began to rain and they believed it might have been Laylatul Qadr. And they said they prayed in the rain and the mud. And when they came up from sajda, everyone had mud on their faces. Can you imagine we doing that today? We can't pray in clean parking lots without putting like a sajda or a janmas or something because we feel our face will or our forehead will get dirty. The companions prayed on mud, they prayed in rocks, they prayed in battlefields, and they never put anything down on the ground because their focus was something else. Our focus is external and superficial, but their focus was on Allah, so they had khushur. This is the real prayer. So Uthman ibn Arfan, he wanted to expand the masjid because the masjid had just like trees, trunks, had palm fronds as a roof so the water would leak every time it rained. So when he had a plan to do that, people objected. They really wanted the masjid to stay the same as it was in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. So he said to them that I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, Man bana lillahi masjidan bana lahu baytan fil jannah mithlahu. The Prophet said, whoever builds for Allah a house, a masjid, Allah will build for him or her a similar house in paradise. So when he related that hadith to the people, he was able to convince them and then he expanded Al-Masjid al-Nabawi. And it was expanded many times in our history. So this is all part and parcel of this great act, Imarat al-Masjid al-Haram, and also Imarat Masajid Allah. This verse is talking about Inna ma ya'muru masajid Allah. There's another reading of this verse, which is also revealed, Inna ma ya'muru masjid Allah. Verily, those who maintain this masjid, Al-Masjid al-Haram, are those who have these qualities, but it also Allah revealed Masajid Allah to make it general to include all the masajid. So may Allah make us among those who attend the masajid and are involved in the work of Imara. Thank you.